In the last lecture, you learned about the three types of data models, conceptual, logical, and physical. In this lecture, we'll be looking at conceptual models. So let's say if you want to build a website for selling online courses so people can sign up and enroll in one or more courses. These are the video courses that online instructors like me upload to this website. A course can have one or more tags like front end or back end. Now to create a database for this website, first we need to create a conceptual model that represents the entities or things or concepts in this business and their relationships with each other. Quite often these entities are things like people, events, locations, and so on. So what concepts or entities do we have here? Well, at first glance, I can quickly pick a couple of entities, student and course. These are the concepts that we need to know about in this domain. Now, we need a way to visually see these entities and their relationships. There are basically two ways to do this. We can use entity relationship or UML diagrams. These are both ways for visually expressing concepts. Entity relationship diagrams are often used for data modeling. UML is short for Unified Modeling Language and its scope goes way beyond data modeling. Some people are more comfortable with UML diagrams, others prefer entity relationship diagrams. They're both equally good when it comes to building conceptual and logical data models. In this course, I'll be using entity relationship diagrams. Now, there are various tools out there for creating entity relationship diagrams. If you're on Windows, you can use Microsoft Visio. There are also a couple of popular online tools like draw.io or lucidcharts. So here on draw.io, on the left side, we have various kinds of visual languages like UML, entity relationship, flowchart, and so on. Now, under entity relationship, here we have this entity object. We can add this to our diagram. Let's double click and rename this to student. Now, inside this box, we list all the attributes that we need to know about each student. Things like their name, their email address, the date they registered, and so on. So let's double click here and list these attributes. Name, email, date, registered. And note that here I'm using camel notation. So we capitalize the first letter of every word except the first word. This is purely my personal preference. You don't have to follow this convention. This is just a conceptual model that we use to communicate with stakeholders. You can use any naming conventions that you prefer, but keep it consistent, okay? Now, one thing you need to know is that data modeling is an iterative process. You can't come up with the perfect design in your first attempt. So you need to constantly go back and forth between the requirements and your models and keep refining them. So these are the attributes that we currently know about students, but they may change later. We may add new attributes or rename or remove some of these attributes. Now let's add another entity here, course. What attributes do we need to know about the course? We need to know its title. We need to know its price, the instructor, and tags. Next, we need to define the relationship between these two entities. So here we have various kinds of relationships, as you can see here. Now, don't worry too much about the difference between these types. You're going to learn about them soon. So here I'm going to select a many-to-many -many relationship. Let's drag and drop this here and attach the left side to the student box and the right side to the course box. There you go. Now let's give this relationship a label. So we double-click it and type enrolls. So we read this relationship from left to right saying student enrolls in course. So this is a conceptual model that gives us a very high level overview of the business domain and the things involved in this domain. At this point, we don't have any details about the type of each attribute, neither do we know or care what database management system we're gonna to use to implement this model. It's just a conceptual model. And we use this to communicate with the business stakeholders so we know we are both on the same page and we talk the same language. These are the benefits of conceptual models. Next, we're gonna use this conceptual model to build a logical model. 